your ability to interact and to work in a team effectively. Those are the two factors which are extremely important. So first is that you know, when you're looking at your fellow students, look for, look for fellow students who have a great track record in terms of being successes in their own prior work uh, roles. And second, often, you know, I often use the tagline, you must stand on the shoulder of giants, and that's for your faculty council. So your learning experience will be determined by your fellow students and the faculty, and the interaction which happens as a result of faculty, staff student interaction. So, you know, so that's important, but that's my two bit. And of course, work experience, uh, industrial experience, you know, your faculty connections will all be a part of this experience. Adding to what Ashish has said, I'll give you a practical example. Typically at our class, you have some Chinese guy, some Russian guy, somebody from Africa, somebody is Indian. Now let us take an example when they are discussing a case of HDR, how does this review? So although the case is of marketing or HR or operations, but all the cases involve a lot of cross-functional expertise. So if somebody, and in this case is probably written in US, based on some US industry. Now how do you really going to translate the learning in India, whether it's China and Africa, right? So all these three guys will have a different perspective. At the same time, if somebody is HR, like in our last class we had HR head, right? So he is able to really bring a lot of functional expertise, real life expertise from the HR domain. Whereas somebody who hails from IT background, he, he can really bring a lot of insights about the IT system. Somebody who has worked on production, he can really bring a lot of real insight about the production. So although you don't have experience in all the areas, your colleagues, your peer groups help you to really create that picture, clear picture in front of you. And you can really rely on their experience. So there is a lot of uh, experiential sharing, sharing is there, right, apart from cross-cultural learning. Frankly speaking, I don't have much to add no, to that. Um, but I, uh, anyway, I think our, our professors will, will, will let us know that uh, when they teach MBA participants and when they teach master's students, it's very different. No? Teaching methods are very different because uh, of the fact that not the MBA participants can really relate what they learn uh, to their past work experience. And this, this is why the interaction, the exchange that they have with the other, other participants will be much richer than uh, for uh, in a, a master's program, for example. Um, yeah, so that's all I can add. <laughs> Anything to add? I think it's been said. Okay. Um, just I'll let you answer the next one first. Um, <laughs> second section um, about the admissions process. We'll spend about 10 15 minutes uh, time on this one. Uh, first, well, I'll combine two questions in one. It's about what are schools looking for in an applicant, things like diversity and future potential, and also the academic size, such as your GPA and GMAT, um, of course. So, what are schools looking for in an applicant? Nancy, if you could start us off, please. Oh, right. there's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> my favorite student in this year's class didn't match our GMAT numbers, didn't match our undergraduate numbers. <laughs> But I went to war. Sure. Um, I went to literally went to war with the admissions committee because this young man had just basically um, gone bankrupt in an import export business in South America. Had sat down, had thought through everything he didn't know and needed to know to try again, and made his case to me and convinced me that he is the future of South American business. So. I, I can't tell you that there's any one thing that we look for. I can tell you to put in the strongest application you can, and we'll do the best we can for you. Um, Nelson? Um, in our school, we don't look for GMAT or uh, uh, GPA. Uh, the, basically, we look at a good undergraduate degree, uh, and with uh, experience, so we value experience, so therefore that uh, uh, we place much uh, uh, emphasis on uh, experience. Uh, you know, every business school is different. For example, uh, the Hull University Business School uh, places a lot of emphasis on work experience, and we call it relevant managerial work experience. 
which we look for is three years. So you may walk in with uh, you know five years work experience, and we may say, no, sorry, you don't fit our profile, because we believe work experience in a managerial capacity is important. After that, uh, it is your undergraduate scores, but uh, you know, and uh, you know, if you have taken GMAT, we welcome the GMAT score. Uh, we insist on IELTS or TOEFL, and uh, we also have uh, inter we also, you also have to attend an interview with the faculty member. For example, in India, it's me. And uh, what we look for is why exactly you want to do an MBA, and why are you targeting our specific institution? You know, so that are what you know. So it is just not business school. It is you. You know, and why are you interested in us? And you know, so those are the parameters that we consider. But I, I, I fully acknowledge that you know there are different ways of looking at it. You know, you can. There are many, but no one will ever say they only work. They only look at GMAT or undergraduate course. Everyone will tell you they look at the person as a whole, and that's what we do. But of course, the weighting may differ from school to school. Um, yeah, our school is a bit the same. You know, we are looking at the potential of the candidate. So GMAT is important, but we are not looking on, only at the GMAT. So the, having a very high score on the GMAT doesn't mean that it will secure you a place in our MBA program. You will also have to go through a, um, an interview, and of course the online application, where you will have to uh, let us know why you, you wish to pursue this MBA, how it fits you know, your, your career objectives. And we are also looking at candidates who are open-minded, who, who do have some kind of international exposure already, or, or who are curious about, uh, about um, uh, what's going on in other countries. You know? um, this is very important because we want uh, to know if the participant will be able to, uh, to um, uh, fit you know, with uh, the MBA class, you know, if he will be able to, uh, to uh, share anything uh, with the other participants. You know? This is very important. Um, and uh, and we're also looking, of course, at the leadership potential and, and the entrepreneurial potential as well. You know? So that's why and we, we can't say that not GMAT is the only only thing we look at. Of course, you know, uh, we really look at the whole uh, potential of the candidates, and uh, and this is assessed through uh, the uh, application and the interview, which is very important. As well. Okay, just uh, moving on, um, you see, as, as most of you must know, you, you need to complete an essay um, as part of your application, or two essays, I think it is. Um, uh, what advice do you have for completing the essays and any common mistakes that you come across? Um, we'll pass you can start some questions. Just do the spell check, and in fact, in last panel, somebody has said, don't believe on Bill Gates. <laughs> and then if you say, for example, applying for Hull, Make sure that you have removed the name of Sydney Business School if you have applied earlier. <laughs> you know, they, they keep on sending the same stuff, right? So these are the final things you, you should really take care. And get a recommendation letter from somebody uh, who really views your decision critically and who can really counter that damn it you don't require an MBA, right? So, and, and, and he should be able to really bring a lot of objectivity. Right? So not only that he, they can only talk about good things about you. So if they are able to bring a lot of uh, negativity about you, that will certainly help you that how this school can really bridge that gap. Uh, what are the competency and skill gaps do I have? Right. So you can really, that will help you to identify which kind of business school you should go for. So say for example, your supervisor rates you that on leadership, uh, out of five scales, you rank two. Right. And this is an honest feedback. Otherwise, you fill up your own uh, recommendation letter and your supervisor generally signs it, right? So if your rating is too bad, uh, maybe you can really put that recommendation aside and go to somebody else. But at least it will give you an idea that where do you stand. Yeah, we'll, we'll come on to the recommendation question shortly, but yeah, anyone to add on the, um, the essays and common mistakes that you see here? Next. The bottom line is that we're asking two things of you. The first is to prove that you can write on a graduate level, and the second is to tell us about yourself, because we can't interview everybody. We make a cut and go from there. So this is your first chance to do that. It may sound like it is a tough assignment. It can be done. Do it in your own words. 
don't plagiarize. We've seen them all. We have.